So today we're gonna take a look at the Guideway GR118 for another review. I've been using this for the past week and uh, actually I'm really impressed with the Guideway as I mentioned in my sound test. But of course we're gonna go into more details on um, what I like and what I don't like about the Guideway. So let's take a look at the build first. So actually it kind of looks like the TRNIM2 or the Yin Yu Ash, um, that kind of look. So it feels uh, definitely upscale. Um, the plastic quality is nice. And you have that Guide Ray logo as well. And I do like that um, kind of pattern that they chose. Um, it's kind of cyberpunkish. ish um, At the other side, you have the tips that they included, which is uh, very different from my usual. Um, so it's kind of a flat tip. And as you can see, uh, the nozzle is uh, very much visible um, with the tips. Right, and it has also has some um, preformed air hooks, um, which is the better preformed air hooks because it doesn't have plastic at the outside. Um, so it has uh, very soft preformed air hooks, which is something I like. And the cable quality is really very good for me. Removable cable also, and uh, you have an L plug here at the top, which is something I like again. So it, this is uh, sort of like the Yin Yu V2 cable, which is something I like, um, kind of silky cable. And uh, yeah, I do already like the cable that they included here. So in terms of comfort, these are the most comfortable earphones that I have worn. This right up there uh, with the CRN IM2, um, in new Ash, uh, that kind of comfortable. Stability is also really nice. Again, that ear that they included, even if uh, it's in the light side, it is very stable on the ear. Isolation is also above average, I would say very good. Um, so this is definitely something that you can use outside and not hear most of the noise. So overall, in terms of the design and build, I don't have any major issues here. Um, these are very nicely built and also nicely designed earphones. Alright, so now let's proceed to the sound. So the GR118 is a slight U-shaped sound. It also has some warmth at the bottom. And if you look at the measurements, it's kind of, a, kind of fairly neutral across the range. Uh, but it has treble roll off uh, around the 8K. Uh, 10k region so this is not a super duper bright earphone um, but uh, one of the key strengths here with the guide ray is it has that natural tonality in the sound a kind of accurate sound which is one of the best that i've listened to i would say in the 10t3 um, level in terms of uh, you know the tonal accuracy here in the gr118 which is very impressive it's a smooth sounding um, IEM. It also has some dryness to it because it's a BA and also dynamic driver IEM. It's kind of a mix. So overall, yeah, this is kind of a mature sound in a way. Um, no sibilance, um, kind of warm sound, uh, but still nice detail across the range. So highs have good body here. Again, it has that 10T3 kind of uh, accuracy on top, um, that natural tonality in the sound, which is something I really like. Uh, but uh, this is different in terms of uh, the signature compared to the 10 t 3 This is not a super bright earphone as I mentioned. For those who love brightness in their music, this is not for you. Uh, mids is one of the best that I've heard in the price range. I'm really a big, big fan of the mids here. So you guys know I love my mids. Um, so definitely this forward in the mix. And from the measurements, um, it's definitely forward in the mix. Um, the vocals here are nice, um, especially the male vocals. It's uh, thick and in the lush category also. Again, smooth nature in the sound also carries to the mids here. So um, actually for me, the mids kind of punches above its price range here. So I'm definitely a big, big fan of the mids and the guide ray. Bass is in the boomy side, um, but it's also forward in the mix. I'm definitely substantial. Um, this won't be enough for bass heads. This is not you know, a super duper bassy earphone. Um, but definitely this substantial and present. Um, the attack is slow, uh, but the decay is pretty fast. So this is not overly boomy in general. This is not like um, the Opera Factory in a way. Um, so this still has a, kind of a control base altogether. But definitely this is not something that you want to monitor with. This is not a super duper tight base. Um, this is still in the boomy side. Um, there's also a mid bass bump. So this adds a bit of muddiness to the sound here with the guide ray. So um, that's something for you guys to note. Detail wise, um, while the signature is not super bright, this is a nicely detailed earphone. It also has some micro detail. Um, so that BA here and the guide ray definitely help on that detail retrieval. The drivers on top resolve even some micro detail. Um, again, with a 10T3 kind of qualities here, but in a kind of a fun package. Response here is pretty fast on top. Again, some micro detail. Um, sound stage here is above average, not the most expensive that I've heard. Imaging is also just above average, again not the best that I've heard in the price range. 
um, separation is just all right. So with the smooth nature of the sound, um, the instruments is uh, okay to find, but uh, not super duper easy. This is not something that you want to use for any mixing work. So overall, this is uh, kind of a well-rounded earphone for some casual listening. So this is a casual listening earphone. Um, this sort of the Tin T3 in a way, but make it a bit more fun and also warm sounding. Um, so definitely, uh, this is for those who like a warmth in their life and also like a um, nice casual warm lesson. So for me personally, I find the highs to be a bit lacking for me. So I like um, some brightness on top. But I would say I would gladly um, take a hold of this if I want a more casual listen maybe for four hours and this something that I can grab. This actually can be my go-to casual listening earphone or relaxed listening earphone when I'm working because uh, it still has very nice mids, which is really you know, something I really, really like. So still very competitive, I would say, in the price range, even if I have some gripes on it. Um, it kind of excels um, in being a relaxed listening IEM and smooth listening IEM. So compared to the most popular earphones here in the channel, so compared to the TFZ T2, the guide ray is definitely warmer. The T2 is a lot brighter. The guide ray is more relaxed, um, but still lively in the guide ray, but definitely the T2 is even more lively. It's a lot more lively. Uh, more punchy, more airy sounding in the T2. The guide ray is smoother, uh, more lush in a way. Um, the T2 is more dry in comparison. Um, the T2 has still that monitoring qualities there. Um, so the guide ray is a little bit more laid back. Um, the T2 is definitely more revealing. The mids are forward in the guide ray, more lush in the guide ray. So that's kind of an advantage over the T2. So if you like mids, uh, maybe the guide ray can be for you. Um, overall, the guide ray has a more toned down, less fatiguing sound um, while still being detailed in the guide ray. The T2 is more revealing. However, there's some fatigue with the T2 in a long casual listen. So overall, I like the T2 more. Um, for a casual listen, guide ray can be my pick. Uh, but I would say uh, I like the T2 more for being a more revealing sound. Um, you can still use it for some monitoring and also more airy, more lively sounding in the T2. Um, compared to the CCA C12, which is uh, my favorite KZ, the C12 is uh, drier sounding. The guide ray is smoother sounding. Um, the C12 is more detailed, um, especially in the mids. The stage is similar. The C12 again is brighter. The C12 is also more revealing, um, just a tad more revealing. Um, less laid back sound, but the C12 is still in the kind of laid back department, but uh, just a tad better. Um, but they're both still, you know, in the relaxed region. So overall, I choose the C12 more over the guide ray. I do like the C12 because uh, um, that multiple BA actually helped in the detour retrieval and having a more kind of dry sound in a C12. That's something that I can still use for some monitoring. So I do prefer the C12 more than the guide ray. Uh, versus the Blonde Zero 3, uh, which is one of uh, my most used earphones nowadays. The Blonde is more U-shaped sounding, the guide ray is more warm, um, and mids are forward in the guide ray. So actually, they're still both warm, uh, but the signature in the guide ray just makes it um, warmer on the ear. The Blonde is brighter, definitely. Um, the bass in the Blonde is more boomy. Um, the Blonde has a more airy sound, more revealing. The guide ray is more toned down and relaxed in comparison. Um, the stage is bigger in the guide ray. The imaging here is similar. Um, separation is similar. So Blonde is really great value for you know the $30 that you're paying for it. Um, overall, I still prefer the Blonde because of the signature. That's more brightness on top and also kind of a more revealing sound across the range. A more fun sound in the Blonde. Uh, so guide ray, uh, nicely built. Um, the sound here is a uh, very welcoming, soothing sound. So definitely for um, those people who like warmth in their life but still has um, you know great detail across the range, especially in the mids department, this is something that you can definitely pick up. For me personally, I may um, use this uh, for a casual listening. Um, I am. Um, this can be actually one of my go-tos for casual listening because uh, Sometimes I listen for four hours straight and I don't want my ears to bleed, um, especially for a reviewer. Sometimes I want to rest my ears. So this doesn't have any sibilance at all. I can even pump up the volume to higher volumes and still doesn't have sibilance. And this has very, very good mids. So actually, this can be one of my go-tos for casual listening and that is pretty impressive. Uh, but definitely, yes, um, compared A-B testing side by side uh, with my popular earphones, I still prefer those over this one. Uh, but this definitely has a place in kind of my 
Bike Collection. And I would still definitely recommend the Guide Ray. It's still good sounding for me. Of course, if you learn something, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. And the future, have you heard of the Guide Ray? What do you think of them? Um, do you like them? Do you love them? Not like them? Let me know also down in the comments below. And I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.